It was a back down we all knew was inevitable and it occurred this afternoon. Northern Territory Chief Minister Natasha Files announced the government is set to reintroduce dry zones in town camps and communities. However, she was still insisting this isn't a return to stronger futures. The Northern Territory Government will bring forward legislation to strengthen alcohol restrictions. I want to be clear, this is not stronger futures. This is NT legislation that allows a clear process. The new legislation will follow local decision-making processes where community alcohol plans will be developed. Communities that want to make changes will go to a vote with 60% of the population needing to agree and the Director of Licensing signing off on these plans. Joining me now for the latest, our Darwin Bureau Chief, Matt Cunningham. Matt, uh, you've held her feet to the fire on this issue and you didn't let up today when you put it to the Chief Minister if she accepted any of the blame over what's happened in Alice Springs. Do you accept that your government got anything wrong in the past eight months, the way it's dealt with this issue? As I said last week, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but we had a Commonwealth government that discontinued, the legislation was not continuing. We have a strong program around local decision-making, empowering communities, and so we work to put in place legislation that allows communities to make those decisions. She was given dozens and dozens of warnings, Matt, from people on the ground, people with expert knowledge, medicos as well as other parliamentarians. Uh, I don't understand how she's still in her job. Look, a lot of people have been trying to work out, Laura, my, I mean... Peter, I'm sorry to do that again. Um, a lot of people have been trying to work out, Peter, uh, why the government has held such a firm line uh, on this issue, why it has refused to back down, despite uh, so many groups uh, saying to the government that they were getting this one wrong. And you go all the way back to June when it had that letter from the Aboriginal health groups. You saw Marion Scrimger and Jacinta Price in the federal parliament saying that this was an absolute disaster. And yet, right up until today, they were still holding this line. Um, at the end of the day, it was only uh, under the threat of being overruled by a federal Labor government uh, that they changed their mind uh, on this decision. You, you played that clip there of, of me asking um, the Chief Minister whether she took any responsibility, whether they admitted that they got this one wrong. I think I asked that question mm. three or four times in that press conference today, and there was no uh, admission even though they've now made this, what I think is a pretty spectacular backflip, there was still no admission uh, that they'd got this wrong. Um, and, and I can't understand it. I can't understand why they didn't listen to those people in the first place. The Chief Minister said today they'd listened to other groups uh, about this issue, but she wouldn't say who those groups were. It's a pretty embarrassing situation now where they've been dragged kicking and screaming to this position, where they finally agreed to do uh, what all of those groups, uh, Aboriginal people in Central Australia, including their own federal member, had been telling them to do uh, for more than eight months. It's interesting, you know, Peter Beattie always, uh, I thought, won more support, not lost support for admitting when he got things wrong. I, I wonder if perhaps this is linked to the likelihood now of, a, of the business community in Alice Springs putting in a class action against uh, the Territory Government. But, uh, you know, you've got a lot of contacts in Alice. How has this announcement been received? Look, I think people are saying, well, why did it take so long? I mean, you, you, you've had so many people in Alice Springs saying, don't do this before it happened, and then so many people after it had happened saying, the results of this are disastrous. Please, please, please reconsider your position. But, you know, when I interviewed the Chief Minister on the day Anthony Albanese arrived in Alice Springs two weeks ago, she was still saying, this is a race-based policy and we're not going to be changing mm our position here. There's also been a bit of scepticism from people on the ground in Alice Springs, I think, about this announcement of $250 million in federal government funding to the Northern Territory um, today. I, I think, uh, yes, uh, there is an argument that the Northern Territory perhaps needs more needs-based funding, but there are concerns about how the money that is already sent to the Northern Territory is being spent. Is that money just going to go to the same groups uh, who really have had responsibility for trying to address these issues uh, over the past six or seven years and haven't really made any great inroads? So uh, I think people would like to see a bit more detail on exactly how that money is going to be spent and whether the Northern Territory government 
government or indeed those service providers are going to be held responsible and accountable uh, for ensuring that if they do receive that money, that, that, that it actually gets results. I think that's where taxpayers' focus is. They want results, absolutely. A lot of goodwill. $30 billion a year is spent on Aboriginal disadvantage, Matt, and uh, clearly we're not spending it where we should. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight from Darwin.